Hello everyone and welcome to another video about Chinese character etymology and phonetic series. In this video I'm going to talk about uh, the phonetic series where the title phonetic element is the character that you can see over here, pronounced guo. Guo. Uh, and it means fruit. Fruit. Now, um, for those of you who do not know what phonetic series are, uh, I encourage you to go and watch the first video in this series, and uh, I would just go go ahead and directly um, s start the, the small lecture without explaining it. So, the three characters that you can see over here, as always, the biggest one is the youngest character of the three, uh, or um, the character which is written in the regular script. This is the seal script version of it, and this is the oracle bone script version of it. Uh, just to date it a little bit, this is roughly 100 AD and onwards. This is roughly 200, well, <laughs> 200 BC, roughly, and before and after. And this is 200 BC and earlier, but let's say, let's say 500 BC and then, and before that. So the character means fruit, and we have to start looking at the oldest version of the character. Actually, if you look at all three versions of the character, um, you can see that the character didn't change much. And this is actually, um, uh, th this is an exception because usually what happens is the characters change a lot. Even um, even even going from from the seal script into the regular script, not to mention going all the way back to the oracle bone script. But in this case, the, all three characters roughly look the same, and they all depict. They basically they can be separated, even though it's not very um, maybe evident in the first character. They can be separated like so into the top and bottom part in all three uh, versions of the character. Um, and the bottom is bottom part of the character is a tree, and the top part of the character is basically I interpret it as the crown of the tree and with these little dots representing the fruits, the individual fruits. Might be also like a fruit cut in half and these little dots would represent the, the pits of the fruit but I would say it's, it's, uh, it's basically the crown of the tree with the dots representing the individual fruits. Now it, it's, a, it's an interesting character um, from one point of view that the bottom, in all, like the bottom part of the character in all three versions of the character which in the modern um, character can be written like this, and it's pronounced mu, and it really is a tree. It's a standalone. It's a standalone. It's not a tree, but it's a standalone character that um, that means tree or wood in the in modern Chinese. So in all three characters, if you can, like, if you look at it, even like in the seal script, the bottom part of the character, if you would separate it um, and just write it as a standalone character, it would mean tree in the seal script as well and even in the oracle bone script like this is how you used to write tree in the oracle bone script but, so you can say that the character is a um, semantic compound or a meaning meaning compound where two um, separate characters are joined together to create a new character and both elements have a semantic value none of them has a phonetic va value but we do not have the the top of the of the oracle bone script character does not exist in the, uh, or at least to my uh, knowledge, it doesn't exist in the uh, regular script. It was it was just lost or didn't mean anything even in the um, in the oracle bone script or wasn't semantically strong enough to survive as uh, f as a character representing the meaning fruit. In either case, when moving on from the oracle bone script to the seal script, all they did was remove the four dots, and I'm going to get to the to it very soon because I know that probably a lot of you have already noticed that the top of the character is written like this and has a pronounced pronunciation in the um, in Chinese today pronounced Tian and it means field field but it has very probably absolutely nothing to do with the character today it is just a graphic simplification of uh, the oracle bone script all they did was they they removed the four dots for simplicity sake to make the character more swift and, and basically this is what it looked like in the seal script and then the regular script is basically just a formatted version of this. They sort of made the edges and uh, transformed the seal script into the regular script formatting. Now, um, I, was, I had an idea uh, to, to analyze the character phonetically as well because um, there are, as you know, phono-semantic compound characters where half of the character is uh, responsible for the 
for the sound and half of it for, for the meaning. So if for just a second I would assume that the character is separated like so, with the bottom part being the semantic element, and I should probably choose a different color now, uh, bottom part being the um, semantic element, and the um, top part being the phonetic element. So that means that the bottom part of the character, mu, tree, would point to the meaning fruit, and the top um, part of the character, tian, would point to the pronunciation, guo, even though they have, like, they don't rhyme today and they, they have seemingly nothing in common. Very often, if you trace back the pronunciations a um, couple of centuries back or a thousand years back, you see that they, they were very similar back then. I did the analysis, and no, <laughs> there is no resemblance between tian, so between the pronunciation of tian and the pronunciation of guo. There's no similarity between that, or at least from the sources that I've been looking at. And um, so, um, as I said earlier, this character is just a graphic simplification of this character, and then that is just a graphic simplification of this character with the top tian having nothing to do with it. It is just, it is just basically the fruit, the, this, this element simplified and formatted. Let me get rid of this terrible handwriting here so that you can't see it. <laughs> And I can go on and um, talk about uh, about the characters that are in this phonetic series. Uh, so the first character is pronounced guo, and it means uh, to. Oh, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you uh, all the other meanings of the uh, character guo. So there are three sort of meaning groups um, of the character guo, and maybe I can. Take away the this text also. So there are three meaning groups. The the first is really fruit. Fruit that traces back all the way to the first original meaning of the character. The second meaning group is result. Result. And the third uh, meaning group is resolute or decisive. Resolute. Resolute. De How do you spell that? Decisive. Hopefully you spell it like that. So the first uh, meaning group, uh, fruit, is directly uh, traceable back to the original meaning of the character. Uh, in modern Chinese, modern Mandarin today, we say shui guo. That's fruit. Um, the second meaning group, result, in modern Chinese, modern Mandarin is jie uh, guo. Um, which also basically can be traced back to the meaning fruit somehow because like the, the fruit of your action is basically the result or the fruit of any action is, is or at least we say it like that I, I don't know if they made that association back then but anyway result and fruit can be somehow um, linked together to the meaning fruit and the third um, sort of like this meaning group resolute and decisive I thought at first that maybe it is just a phonetic loan but then when I looked at and this is maybe it's, it's a complete coincidence, it has absolutely nothing to do with it, but it was just an idea that if you look at the word result and resolute, I just thought that maybe that, that like the spelling is so close that um, maybe that actually they do have something in common, even though it's a really um, insane way to, to analyze uh, something when it comes to Chinese character etymology through spelling in English. But um, somehow uh, result and resolute could be linked together and then subsequently can be linked to the meaning group. And so basically all th these three um, sort of uh, meaning groups for this character can be traced back to the meaning fruit somehow. And uh, the character can be also found in expressions like ru guo, which means if, and uh, guo ran, which means something like as expected or after all. It's, it's slightly difficult to translate as a standalone um, expression. You would have to see it in the in a phrase, for instance, ta ta guo ran zuo le. Like he really did it. Like he did it as you know, as expected, or, or something like that. So so much for the for the meanings uh, of the character guo. And now the first character in the series, guo. It means um, to wrap, bind, encircle, or confine. So wrap wrap or bind. The phonetic element in the character, not, maybe not noticeable, 
right away is this one Guo. and the semantic element using the magenta color to um, highlight now this is pronounced e and it means clothes clothes and um, you might ask yourself what are clothes what clothes have to do with rap and bind the original meaning of this character was e the original meaning of this character was clothing or dress or s something that you really like wrap like use use that thing to wrap yourself with and um um the, the reason why I, I think this is true i didn't find this definition in any old dictionaries but there are words and expressions today where guo really means clothes like there is there is a meaning which there is a there is there is a word um su guo which I think should be plain white clothing, if I remember correctly. Su is, is plain, and, and guo, uh, if, it, if it's translated like plain clothing, then guo cannot be wrap or, or bind or anything. It has to be clothing. So, um, original meaning of this character, clothes, clothing, dress. And uh, today it means wrap or bind. And you can find it in the um, common expression today, package or parcel, uh, pronounced bao guo, bao guo. Second character in the series, uh, pronounced luo. luo. It means bare, naked, or undress. Mm, bare, naked. I'm really sorry for the handwriting, but you know it's, it's so hard on this tablet. I can't, <laughs> I, I, I can't manage to 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 write it any better. Um, so the phonetic element is. Uh, this character over here, guo, ruo, they rhyme perfectly, only the initial is different. And the semantic element, funnily, is the same <laughs> as here. Uh, so it's, again, e, close. It's just positioned in a, a you know, at a different place. Um, I can show you in the seal script, and this is basically the reason why I put the seal script characters next to all of these characters here. The e character is over here separated so that you can fit the guo uh, phonetic into it and in this in this case and there are other characters that that um, where the e phonetic is separated so that something can be fit into it in this case it has also like a f semi semantic value because it basically wraps around the guo phonetic so wrap bind or close as it was before and in this case e is over here and it's the same character you can you can you can see it right it's the same character it's just as it's supposed to look like but it's on the left side and this this is just the um this is just the way you write the e uh semantic element when it's on the left side of characters and um and, and, and this is why I find uh, quite uh, interesting and important at the same time to look at seal script versions of characters because um, here in this case and in this case the e, the cloth um, character is almost untouched. I mean, here yes, it's separated, but it, it has the exact same form. Whereas here, it's you know, if you see this for the first time and when you see this for the first time, you would never probably imagine that you know it's it's actually the same character. Anyway. Ruo means bare and naked, and the semantic uh, element in it is uh, close. And um, you can find it in, uh, in, in words like uh, luo uh, which means naked, not to confuse with lo ti, which is uh, staircase. So if you say wo xia lo ti le, it means I went down the staircase. And if you say wo xia luo ti le, uh, doesn't really make sense. You wouldn't probably say it like that, but it would mean I went down naked. So careful with that. Um, the next character is pronounced Huo, and the the reason why I mentioned that is that the, actually it actually really happened. Someone said it on TV, like there was a foreigner on TV who accidentally made that mistake. He confused Lo Ti with Luo Ti. Um, Huo means a partner or, or companion. Partner or companion. This is the first meaning group, and the second meaning group of the character is a many, much, numerous. This is two. So 
should say many. The phonetic element in the character is the one that we know already, on the left side this time. And uh, the semantic element is this, which is pronounced tuo, and means a lot or many. A lot or many. Um, some words where you can find it, for instance, huopan, which is a which is really a partner. Now, one question that you might have is, why is why do I think that huo is the oh, I'm sorry, guo is the phonetic element. So this one over here, why guo is the phonetic element in the character and not duo when both of them have wo final, right? Guo, huo, duo. All of all three of them have a wo final, um, and all are, all around today. So how do I know that huo? Uh, I mean, the uh, guo is the phonetic element, not duo. Well, first of all, because a duo is clearly the semantic. Uh, Duo a lot, and then the meaning of the character ho uh, many. And second of all, they do rhyme today, uh, ho, duo, and guo. All three rhyme today, but they didn't rhyme when the characters were created. So uh, just to show, and this is going to get a little bit messy, but let me let me do it like this. So this character over here used to be pronounced, and this is I used um, um, a publication or a book which is called. Shanggu Inxi, I think. Um, and it's about the sounds of old Chinese and the phonetic reconstru reconstructions of old Chinese. So this character, Guo, used to be pronounced, let me try to get this, Klol, Klol. Um, this character over here used to be pronounced Grol. So Klol, Grol. Um, so that rhymes perfectly. So that tells us that this character probably was the phonetic in this character. And this duo, this duo used to be pronounced. I can't, I can't, I can't pronounce this, but lal, lal. Okay, so glol, grol, lal. Clearly, this and this. Uh, so, so the the phonetic element, the the guo and ho, rhyme more than the than the alleged phonetic element duo and ho back in old Chinese. All right, it's getting a little bit messy, so. Maybe I'm sorry for that. Uh, only two more characters left. This is when it's going to get interesting because the pronunciation of this character over here and the other one as well has nothing to do with guo, and it's pronounced k, k, and this one is pronounced k, k. So, um, phonetic element is. And I'm going to explain to you in just a bit why. Um, the character used to mean, or means, grain or kernel, grain. So a piece of grain. Grain, and it's um, used as a numerative or as a measure word for small, small objects, small round objects. Like if you say. Not, they don't have to be too small. Like you can say, um, like one egg. That's not too small, but still, it's a round, rather small object. And um, the semantic element in the character is this one over here. It's pronounced ye, and it's a it's a head. Head. Modern meaning is page. Page, but original meaning of ye was head, and the original meaning of this character was either small head, like really like a small head of a person, or a small grain head, like a head of the grain, right? And now, why is guo the phonetic element in ke? Well, uh, because, like I said, these characters, so this one and this one, they used to they used to rhyme. Already in Middle Chinese, so that would be Middle Chinese, if I'm not mistaken, is from the 7th century to the 13th century, roughly. So at that time, these two characters, and they, they, it's not that they only rhymed, they were pronounced almost in the same way. So guo, fruit, and k, grain, 
in uh, Middle Chinese were pronounced almost in the same way. And that, that's not when the character was created. The character was created even earlier than that, maybe. I'm, I'm not really sure when, but let's say another 700, 800, 900 years before that. So the pronunciation of guo and k um, was even closer. And uh, the last character, which is pronounced k, and it means lesson or class. Lesson or class. I think I set a new record in, uh, uh, in like messiness of the, of the presentation because it's getting so full now and really my handwriting is not adding to the, uh, to, to the understanding. Well, anyway, um, the phonetic element in this character is, again, guo. And now you can see the same logic, even though this is k, this is k. But if I prove that guo is the phonetic element in k, um, it's almost absolutely logical that it's going to, you know, based on this example over here, we can assume that it's going to, by the same logic, be the phonetic element in uh, this character as well. I did a phonetic uh, research. Um, the... A k and guo used to be more similar in Middle Chinese than k and guo. So, but, but still, they were in the same phonetic, uh, sort of, I call it class. Uh, so they used to, used to rhyme. They, they used to rhyme very much. So going back further from that, even more back into, let's say, I don't know, another 900 years back, uh, k and guo would be even more similar. So definitely this guo is a, the phonetic element in k. And uh, the semantic element is this character over here, which is pronounced yin. Yin. And it means uh, words or speech. And words or speech, this character is often found uh, as a semantic element in many characters that have something to do with either speaking or even writing sometimes and, and so class uh, lesson is definitely falling into that semantic group and it's just um, the basically the, the uh, semantic element pointing to the meaning of the character lesson and class and it has also another meaning which is ke shui, which means to levy taxes on something levy taxes on something all right so I hope you enjoyed this presentation only five characters but got a little bit messy. I'm sorry for that. Um, and I um, uh, hope to see you in the next videos.